Dogumentary TV, producing the best breed documentaries. It's Gerald Antoine. I'm a native of Jackson, Mississippi, but I'm an avid dog lover and an avid uh, lover of the European Doberman Pinscher. The breed was created for specifically to be a protection dog for personal protection. In the 19th century, the, um, the, cr the creator of the breed, his, his name was Carl Frederick Lewis Doberman. Back in the 19th century, the tax collectors like the IRS today, they would, back then they would knock on your door whether it was monthly or weekly or whatever the time period was. And he had gotten threatened so many times with people saying, oh, don't come to my, don't come to my door, don't come to my door, don't, don't ask me for no money, and he would get his life threatened. So he decided to create a breed that was not only physically intimidating, but would do some personal protection. So he, he made a combination of the different type of breeds of, with the Great Dane for the speed, the Rottweiler for the size, uh, the Terrier for the, for the heart, the, um, the, the drive. He created this breed, and he also in included the cropping of the ears for intimidating factor. So that's what the, the breed has how it evolved. There is a difference between a state guardian, personal protection, and police canine training. There's a huge difference. When you're talking about an estate guardian, we're guarding his compound, his territory, his, his domicile. Examples of, of compound guardians or estate guardian dogs are like bull mastiffs, English mastiffs, and Great Danes. Those are some of the examples of some of the compound and estate guardian dogs. A uh, personal protection dog protects the individual no matter where they're located. Whether they go into the ATM, go into the park, go into a neighborhood, late night neighborhood walk, whether they're driving, the, the personal protection guards that person wherever that person is. Examples for personal protection dog are like German Shepherds, Rottweilers, and the Doberman Pinscher. Um, when you talk about police canine training, a dog specifically trained to not only probably sniff out drugs, but also to do a deterrent and catch a fleeing felon or fleeing criminal where the actual police would not go. So if they go into a building where it's dark, the police are going to call out K-9 because they're the ones that will go in when the police don't want to go into a building to secure it or clear a building. Some examples of the K-9 police dogs are German Shepherds, Dutch Shepherds, and Belgian Malinois. So there's a whole different gambit of what these dogs do, but at the end of the day, they're trained to protect, they're trained to protect on command. The reason why I chose the um, European Doberman Pinscher for personal protection is because it had a combination of a lot of other dogs, but it didn't have some of the things that the other dogs had. It was short-haired, and I like that. It was smart. It's part Greyhound, so it loves to run. I love to run. And it was, I've, I found to realize that, I've determined and found by research that they are very codependent upon their owners. They love to be around their owners. And maybe a lot of dogs do. But for me, I think the personal protection for this particular breed fit me good because it had the right amount of size, right amount of stealth, and the right amount of intelligence. During my process of determining what type of dog I wanted, I, it narrowed down to some of the, the most popular dogs. Malinois, the reason why I didn't like the Malinois because they're, they're great dogs and they do great work. Their drive is very high, but some of them lack the size that I wanted. And that's something you can't, you can't make him. You can't make him big if he wasn't born genetically big. Um, the reason why I chose the Doberman over the German Shepherd is because obviously a lot of hair shedding. I, I don't want to keep every morning using a roller 
getting a lot of hair off of me throughout my house because I want my personal protection dog to not only be an outside dog, but an inside dog. The Rottweiler, um, don't get me wrong, I love the Rottweilers. They're probably one of the best breeds out there compared to the Dobermans. But they tend, they tend to have the tendency to gain weight if you don't work them out a lot. You know, they tend to have a little bit of a hip dysplasia in some of them as they get older. And I love the Rottweiler because the Rottweiler shares some of the same DNA as the Doberman Pinscher, but I decided to stick with the Doberman because I did more research. The Doberman Pinscher does have some genetic issues, but if you get a right one, you can get a good 10 to 12 years out of the dog with minimal hip issues. And I know all of the, the, the working lines, the show lines, and it's like, you give me a, a pedigree, I can tell you right off the bat if the pedigree is what I would buy. People, a lot of people come to me and ask me, Which, how do you think about this pedigree? If I see certain lines in there that is very similar to a lot of show lines, I say, hey, he's gonna be a pretty dog, but I don't know about the workability. I'll be honest with you. The reason why I decided to protection train my dog, and let me put this out there first, I am, not a, I am not a canine trainer, I'm a part of a club. And I give all props and respects to the trainers who have helped me out along the way. Lewis Williams of Black Mass Kennel. Um, you got Adrian Cent, uh, and Centino from, uh, who did the ring sport training with my dog. You got Wolfgang Radar, who's a German canine expert. That's his name of his club. You got Al Benuelos, who has won national titles and personal protections. And you got OJ, Otis James Knighton from the canine coach. You know, all these guys helped me build my dogs up to what they are now. But the reason why I decided to do personal protection is because I wanted complete control over my dog. People assume to believe that Personal protection training is cruel and it's, it's, it's not good for the dog. Well, I put that in perspective. When you see these police dogs, when they come to people's aid, when you see this other personal protection dog, when they come to their owner's aid, what do you think it took to get to that point? I put that in the same context as these ballerina dancers. You see how elegant they dance and how easy they move along the floors. But when you pull their shoes off, you see the deform, deformities, the, the bone, bone breakage, you see the, the corns, you see the, the discoloration, you see all the scars on their feet. But what you see on the outside is them dancing around. You don't see the work it took to get in there. When you do personal protection, you have to break him down where you let him know that you're in charge and then you build him up. You don't break him down as a dog, but you break him down and show him that we're gonna do things step by step by step. You gotta build the drive work up, whether using ball or food or a toy. You gotta build the focus up. So what I wanted to do, the reason why I personal protection training with these dogs, because I don't want a liability on my hands. People already, when I walk my dogs on the street in my neighborhood, they, they part like the Red Sea, but they don't know that I have complete control over him. So when you're doing personal protection, not only are you obedience training them, but you're training them how to identify a threat, you're training them when to bite. You're training them when to release that bite. Dogs, they come into a tunnel vision. And when they're in, in a vision, a tunnel vision, nothing around them, they don't see nothing, they don't hear anything. When you do personal protection training, the dogs can be able to hear you and you only, even in the heat of a battle. And that's something you want to be able to control. If he goes after a person and that's the wrong person, you want to be able to recall him in the middle of his pursuit without using e-collars, without chasing behind him, because you won't catch him. He's got four legs, you've only got two. So personal protection is really obedience training, but you, you're, doing, you're giving the dog the training and the tools on what he wants to do. He wants to play, he wants to pray, he wants to bite, he wants to please you. And when you water him down and not let him do the things that he was designed to do, then are you really getting what you, what you asked for? People buy Dobermans for a reason. If they wanted a, if they didn't, if they want just a household pet, they would've got a Maltese, they, got a, they would've got a Pomeranian, they would've got a Chihuahua, something that's a lap dog, something that is docile when it needs to be, but a 100% pet and confidant. When you get a Doberman, understand what you may be getting into. 
You may get a dog. Now, not, not every Doberman is designed for protection work. You know, not all of them gonna bite on command. Some of them may be scared of people. Some of them may be skittish. But when you get a, 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 a Doberman and you do research on getting the right genetic bloodline, you, you should know what you're getting into. With that being said, put them into some sport work. Put them into ring sport, IPO training, you know, uh, PSA training. But you want to get him active where he's stimulated all the time. That way when you come home, your yard's not tore up. You know, these are, this is called a working breed. It wants to work. Since our last video, um, Brody has achieved his IPO2 and the handler was Al Benuelos. Right now, we're, we're, we're gonna be competing this month in December in Las Vegas for his IPO3. If he does well enough with the scores, well, we're, we're discussing about doing regionals with him. Alonzo has an IPO1. He's right now seven and a half years old. Human age is like 49, so he's, into, he's, he's a house dog now, but we still do personal protection work to keep him active, keep his joints moving, keep his muscles and his tone right, and keep his mind right. Alonzo is, he's dual title. He's got a few obedience titles in AKC, CGC, CGCA. Um, he has an obedience title in ring sport. Uh, it's called a CSAU. And we have a third dog. His name is Bishop. He's, he's an up and coming champion. He's an offspring of Brody. Right now, Bishop has a, a, a BH and we're working on an IPO1, but he's a new breed. And with, with dogs, like anything else, if you're going to stay in this game, you have to, if you're, a love, if, if, you're, if you're an avid lover of the breed, whatever breed it is, and you want to constantly do something with the breed, a working line, you have to start getting another dog for replacement. These dogs get old, you want to make sure they live as long as they can so you get a replacement. So Bishop now is two years old, he's the son of Brody, he bites hard, he's, he's bitter sweet. That means he's very, very mild, but when he works, he cranks up and he shoots like a torpedo. So right now we're working on the third dog, Bishop. He's, the next time we do a video or shooting, hopefully, hopefully we'll have him on. At the end of the day, I'm always gonna be into a working dog. I think the Doberman is one of the best dogs out there. That's my own personal perspective. A lot of people have their own um, idea of what their dog is, but for me, for me only, I think that the Doberman Pinscher is the ideal dog, whether it's for a small living quarters or a large two and three acre compound. So no matter what dog I have, I'm gonna always do a lot of personal protection because it stimulates the dog mind and body and it keeps them sharp. But it also, it keeps me sharp because when you train a dog, you're training yourself as well. And it keeps me active. And with that being said, I'm always gonna be around people. I'm always gonna be around kids. And I want my dog to be able to be acclimated to society, but also be able to work when he needs to work.